Hello again. Welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Again, thank you. Joined by Chris, Chris okay. Leite. Um, we're going to be doing the Beer del Borgo. Genziani. Genziana. Oh, I'm losing the light a, bit, a little bit. I think we should be okay. It's a bit of a dark old kitchen. But again, you've got that classic Beer del Borgo on the glass and there's the bottle cap there of an Italian there's a lot of Italian old-fashioned towers all over Italy um, so let's get this open yeah. into a glass sure. you know, so it's caps cause wow. a little bit of an issue sometimes but um, yeah yeah no problem this time oh look at the smoke over that it's it's smoke out. look at what they're all smoking now, now it's actual beer yeah. now then <laughs> what a it's dripping down my uh, <laughs> Driven down my fingers here, but um, Chris, what have we got with them? Um, they mentioned some kind of root. Yeah, it's something that, that, that's local just to just to the, this brewery. There's local root. We're not familiar with it because we're not from Italy, clearly. Yeah. Um, our Italian is sub schoolboy <laughs> at best. Um, but yeah, it gives it a, a kind of a unique flavour. So I'm quite I'm quite looking forward to this because it's going to be different. Yeah. Um, not that Birdo Borgo doesn't always supply something. A little bit different, you know. Oh, it's been it's yeah. been a bit of a roller coaster, haven't it? Yeah. To be honest, um, not it's it's not a good and bad roller coaster. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's been a massive roller coaster with our taste buds. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's just been amazing. Oh, really, hasn't it? Yeah. I think. Uh, well, we just tried the. Oh God! What was the name of it? The Ambrosco, la, la, uh, um, there you go. We uh, just yeah. tried this one. The liquid Equilibrista. And that was, that was just, I mean, yeah, that, that was blow your socks off, kind of. But that's in our previous review, so check that one out. Yeah, check that one out. Have a look at that. Okay. Especially well, if you've yeah. got a wedding coming up, because it yeah. might just give you that little option extra. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Don't order champagne, order order a bottle of that, order a few bottles of that. Yeah. You'll blow your guests' minds because it tastes just like champagne. Okay, this one is quite cloudy. It's bottle conditioned. Oh, look it's at the, the sediment. sediment. Yeah, yeah. The sediment is very, very... It seems like quite a high gravity on this because yeah. the sediment just sat there. It's not sinking quickly. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's okay, you know. Sediment in the I past. do like yeah. I do like sediment in my beer. I always have. Um, I'm also getting on the big chunks, but this seems yeah. like it. If it had been filtered, this wouldn't have been there. So no, no. yeah, and, uh, but there's there's just small bits there, small enough to just be floating around, all the way up to the top of the glass. See if I can get it to focus, I'll hide my face. It usually focuses quite quickly. Then there you go. You can just see the sediment there. Little bits of the sediment. Now, Chris, if, if anybody new to Real Ale is, is watching, as there's a lot of the time they do, um, a, a bottle conditioned beer is a beer where they put the sediment in the bottom of the bottle mm. just to give, it's, it's actually live yeast, you can actually age a beer like this over the normally about a 6% beer you can age for 12 months. Yeah. It actually enhances the flavour. So this has been aging since. June or July? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Check that. Well, end date is 03 12, so this comes to you June? About June, yeah. So we've yeah. been aging this for about four months. So it, it, it'll, the more you age a beer, the more the smooth it gets and just the better it gets. So so if you open a bottle condition beer, you pour the, pour the beer in, you see all these different bits of lumps, don't throw the beer away. No. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. It's just the way. It's just the old-fashioned way of making beer. Yeah. You know, which and, is, and some beers, in the same way as wines, won't stand up to aging. So yeah. Some beers just just won't. You you can't do it. No. Because they're not high enough quality. Yeah. Um. So in the same way that a good wine will taste bloody awful after three months of being bottled, um, well, a good tasting wine, not necessarily a good wine. Yeah. Uh, equally, a bad taste of wine might taste great after three months. Yeah. With a beer. Same deal, you know. Um, I've got some faith in these guys that when they say they can age it for a bit in the bottle, absolutely, 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 they're probably spot on. So, what are we getting on our nose? Let's give the beard a bit of a wash round. Let's get the nose on this beard. Apparently, it's very floral. Mm. Oh, I'm getting 
because it seems sour again. Slightly it's towards that end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it seems. Seems like they've used that that same type of hop. Yeah, but not as much. Yeah. Um, it, the, the hop that last time was used so much to the point where it, the beer had become sour, but not in a bad way. It's beautiful. It's sour yeah. in, in a kind of a champagne you know, carver end of things. Yeah. This yeah. this is gentler. Absolutely. Yeah. Smell beautiful. It does smell floral. Mm. So it, like they pick fresh and pick flowers, but it must be the the. Um, this is that local roots. Uh, the, yeah, the local root which they've given unmistakable aroma. So I think. I can't pin it to anything, which makes no, sense. It's exactly. Yeah. It's unmistakable because we've not taken the root. <coughs> the root is just for their, just from their local area. So let's dig in. Mm. Cheers, Chris. Chin chin. Chin chin. Oh wow, that is different. Mm. That's like you've you've tripped over and you've fallen into a basket of flowers. Yeah, but not a basket of spiky flowers. A basket of smooth oh. flowers that are just kind of mushing out in your mouth. That's oh, I'm really liking that. Mm. No, the the floral. Uh, you know, you've got floral bunch of beers like Spitfire, yeah. something like that, where where the heads of flowers are like boom over the top, and you know. The, the, this Absolutely. is much more subtle. It's very, very subtle, but but the it's it's wow. This is. I think I'm gonna have to dig a, a go again on this one and really. Oh, that is that is something else. It's got that great quality about it where the you can't. You might be able to see it seen by the, the how the sediment is moving about, but there's sort of some very gentle carbonation yeah. in this, yeah. which gives it that soft water feel oh, that, that allows yeah. the, the taste just to swirl around your mouth, and and again gives you the hit in yeah. one in one go. Yeah, you're not left with sweet, sour, you know, flour. You know, it's very in three, different, in three different bits. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm me. finding out. How well this is going down, as you say, it's not fizzing. It's not overly fizzing with carbonation. Like I don't think we come across one of their beers yet that's done that. No. <coughs> um, it's not been forced carbonated. The carbonation will come from the the bottle conditioning too, and that is it. Just seems gentle, smooth, and it's got wonderful floral, flowery tastes. There's bags of character in there. <coughs> bags of character. Heavy. Um gravity for such a light tasting beer which is quite unusual and you know to think back to the olden days when you know, you'd have a heavy gravity lager which yeah. would have been close towards his IPA and things I think yeah um, it's not sort of heaviness for the sake of heaviness this this is giving you something from that this giving you the opportunity to taste the beer in a different way so you, you're not going to swirl this back endlessly no no you're going to want to savour each this is a savouring, savouring beer, and we, we both we touched on this subject earlier after we did our first review of today, which was the Bath Ales, where we mentioned the fact that we really did get into the beer and it was over in 15 minutes. Mm. And which, if you weren't on camera, if you weren't filming and trying to work out all the different flavours, you would probably take half an hour to an hour to drink the beer. Yeah, easy, yeah. The point I'm trying to make is. We're drinking it very quickly at the moment to be able to give you guys the chance to try and... Well, we're trying to give you what flavours we're getting from the beer, but I really wouldn't advise really guzzling this beer. This yeah. is one to savour. Yeah, you can sit um, crappily for an hour and watch, you know, uh, the world of war. Uh, mm. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'd happily sit there and watch some kind of historical documentary, get my, get my gums around this. There's, a, there's a, a certain amount of hop in this as well, there's, there's a certain hop used, as well as it gives you that really nice sweet malty backbone in, in mm. the beer, it's, it's, like, it's not a British bittersweet not, taste. No, it's not a kind of, kind of a harsh malt, it's, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 you spot on, it's sweet. It's very, it's, it's sweet. It's more like a, mm. not quite Malteser, yeah. it takes straight the chocolate out, think about Malteser, maybe it's like that. You know, yeah, yeah. And we all know what Maltesers are. Even foreign types know what they are. Absolutely. It's that, it's that middle of the Maltese, like you're saying. 
but but florally, massively. Yeah. Would you say? I mean, it's quite difficult. I, I'm not sure on my flowers myself, but what kind of flower would you say? Rose petals, or would you say? There's a hint of rose. There's for me. There's a hint of lavender in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I I often think about beers in comparison to childhood sweets. So. I've got a bit of Parma Violet from that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, they very often yeah. be referred to as old lady sweets in this country. Yeah. They're little yeah. purple sweets, come in a little tube, and, and you tuck those away, and, and they give you that floral. They're probably the only floral sweet yes. that children get. Parma Violet in a glass. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's not, we're not. Talking strictly Parma no. Violets, this is this is so much more complex than that. There's so much more going on with the hops, the weeds, and and the floral notes. But this is this is another one to save it. And I really really recommend anybody watching this to really go out and try it. It's absolutely fantastic. Is there, there's a website that you can pick this stuff up. The, 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 the is it beer.org.it? Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, there's their own website. Can they get this from the? Is it beers of Europe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you check right. out beers of Europe, you should be able to check, pick these these beers up. Mm. Um, Worth the effort effort to, to do that. Also, there's an Italian website which actually a viewer gave me, um, which they do craft beer from all over the world, and they stock their whole range. Mm. But for us here, we, we we often talk about it as oh kind of like oh dear. We, we've drunk another beer at our burger beer, there's, there's only two left. Mm. We, we, we're we kind of like thinking, where can we get it? We wish, we Absolutely. somewhere like yeah. Waitrose. Yeah, stick it in Waitrose, stick it in Waitrose, wherever, any supermarket would, would exactly. be off their trump not to be stocking this kind of wine. Yeah. Wine, beer, in a, in a wine style bottle, let's Absolutely. not forget. Because this is part of the revolution for me, of, yeah. of where beer is going. Beer shouldn't be stuck away in a working man's club. It shouldn't be stuck away in maybe the half decent pub that you might encounter now and then. You yeah. see the bright lights, the, the flashy yeah. the flashy beer yeah. pubs and you think no, 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 yeah. please, no. And, and it shouldn't be like an extra add-on in the pub to all the Fosters no. and Stella and all exactly. the crap like that. This should be... This, this should be front and centre. Yeah. Look, you like beer. Here is some beer. Try this beer. Try this beer. This is bloody fantastic. Absolutely. And this is bloody fantastic. Great, great beer. Mm. Um, so, Chris, on that note, I'd like you to give you a rating on this, on the the uh, Gen Ziano. Or, but, but first, let, could I just read out the? I'll just read out the note that they sent. Uh, the Gen Ziano is a local root rich of unmistakable aromas and perfumes. Used in small quantities in this beer, it offers floral and spicy notes at the nose. Is there anything spicy I'm not picking there? up the spice. For yeah, no. no. It is inspiring in its elegance and refinement. And I think, just I'll just finish this off, I've been told it resembles a perfume. Absolutely. Mm. Um, but the elegance of this beer, the absolute elegance of it is... The way they're pushing beer sometimes these days is aimed towards... Um, for want of a better term, the ladies market, uh. this is something that you can say to your wife, to your girlfriend, whatever, to your mother. Um, it depends on close you are. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's something you could say, try this, it's different, it's not like um, my, you know, pedigree or, or London Brown, yeah. this is something that might appeal to you. Um, it's a bit more gentle, it's something that's tasty, it's something that gives you those floral hits. That yeah. Maybe some kind of, uh, that some top end wines might do. Um, but it allows you to have a drink, you know, you can have, you could have a pint of this. I mean, one of these gives you three quarters, which is plenty in my view. Yeah. At 6.1%. 6.4%. 6.4%. Yeah. That's plenty, you know, you sat down, you're having a beer. one, sorry. And, and, and I think this is the great thing about these wines, is that if you would sit down and have a meal with any one of those Guess in tow. Yeah, it wouldn't be like forcing a can of lager on them. No, and have no. This with your dinner, you know. No, this isn't what this is about. This is about a cultured drinking experience. It would shock them. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And and you you could say, don't be shocked. Be happy. You know. Yeah. In the same way that the, the oh, 
I can't remember the blast name of it, but the other one was like champagne. This is like a, a mellow drink. This is like a lovely, perfect mellow drink to have with your dinner. Absolutely. And, and share with your family. And even, even the kids wouldn't be far off of this, I don't think. Not in a kind of alcohol pop way, but in a way that you could say to your teenage kid, try this, you know, do this or this is beer. But yeah. don't be confused by all the other stuff that's out there. No. Do you know one one thing before we do go, because we are going right into fifteen minutes here, but um I think with ale years ago it was um classed as an old man's drink and the youngsters in the 70s wanted something different, so they so they started drinking lager. Mm. What's very, very funny I'm finding now, and it's, it's hot on the topic, is that them young people are now kind of senior citizens. They're in their 50s and 60s, and you see them drinking lager. Mm. And now they're young, because we've spoken about this, we've seen people in Cardiff Bay drinking pints of dark, young people. It's because they don't want to drink what their dad's drinking. Yeah. They want something different, so the tables are kind of turning back towards ale, yeah, and and good beer, and 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 you, it's, know, you know you know the core audience for this stuff is well around our age, group. absolutely, yeah, mid thirties, yeah. early thirties, early thirties, early thirties, yeah, early thirties, early thirties still, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, early thirties, yeah, it's people are it's a reaction against that old that old style of uh, yeah, 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 because and I think possibly because the mainstream breweries have cheapened everything else, yeah. And this gives us a way back into uh, an older way of doing stuff. Quality, because you wouldn't drink if you wanted. If I said to you, right, I'm gonna go and buy you a bottle of wine. I'm gonna buy you, and I come back with a bottle of Lambrini. Yeah, I ain't gonna be happy. That's no, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But that's how I think about um, about these craft. Uh, sorry, about these mass-produced lagers. If you if you ask me for a beer and you come come with a mass-produced lager, it's like offering me a glass of Lambrini. It's just not gonna work. It's not gonna do it for me. No. But going back to this. Beer. Uh, could you give a rating, Chris? I could. Um, again, it's all about occasion for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with a nine again. You yeah. Know, I, I didn't. Uh, I don't want to do this all the time. But no, it's hard. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so many... I. I cannot. I cannot separate this beer from absolute quality, absolute mastery of. Crafting a beer, yeah, um, and I've crafted it, and and I can see it fit in on occasion perfectly. Um, and again, this this is that perfect dinner with your relatives. Try this; it's absolutely gorgeous. It it doesn't feel like you're drinking a beer. It feels like you're drinking a drink mm. that just happens to resemble quality. Beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do it again. Last, I joined Chris. I, I the believe me, the bath ales. Gem, I think Chris gave it eight point five, and I think I give it nine. Mm. I've gone three nines in a row, but this deserves another nine. It's it's magical, it's fantastic, and I cannot wait to go and share this with the ladies. It's a very very good drink. Yeah. So, thanks for watching again. Um, thanks to Chris for coming. We've done three review reviews in a row. We're all getting slightly tongue tied with the beer. Yeah, it's busy work. <laughs> it's hard work. Um, this is for you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. This is for you guys. Um, we'll we're going to find something in the future, some new material, some good new material for you to to watch. We've got the Artisan Brewery to visit soon as well. That's oh gonna, yeah, that's yeah, we're going to get in. So yeah. Simon Doherty, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. we're going to get in and uh, do a do a brewery tour with you guys. Um, but thanks for thanks for watching, and cheers. Cheers.